Your faces say that perhaps you haven't turned up anything. We investigated all over the mountain actually, but we didn't see anyone that looked like you or hear of anyone else meeting you. This is not unexpected. I haven't made much progress either. He appears to know that we are looking for him and has opted to lie low for the time being. Still, there is one thing I found. I discovered footprints on some parts of the mountain, and although they were a little covered by the snow, I can tell they had been left by someone of a similar size to myself. The footprints were quite numerous, so I believe my next step will be to rule out each of the adventurers active on Dragon's Spine one by one. We can help with that. We have plenty of contact with adventurers. So now we... Oh, what is that? <laughs> what is that? It came from that direction. Could it be the imposter? Let's go check it out. Yes, let's hurry.
It was nothing really. We just hit a few land landslides and snow drifts and took a few downhill tumbles. You know the deal. They sound like unforgettable life events to me. Anyway, you are correct. We haven't made it to the base camp yet. We have been extraordinary. Extraordinarily, extraordinarily poor luck over the last few days, almost as if a sinister force has been trying to thwart our every move. <laughs> this is because of Penny, I'm sure of it. Fortunately, we made advance arrangements for Gerald to remain in a safe location and conduct some basic physical training exercises. I'm sorry. I'm the one to blame for all this. I've always had bad luck, and it always rubs off on everyone around me. Sorry to create so much extra trouble for everyone. I don't know what to say. Maybe this is the awesome power of fate, the scary kind, I mean. Don't say that. It has nothing to do with fate. I agree. I'm not scared to be around you. Yep, we are just used to it now. Besides, it's not like we have the most amazing luck ourselves. Really, I think you guys have way better luck than I do. Well, uh, what can we do about it? Oh, Bayman knows. How about Bayman share some of her luck with you? You're welcome to a bit of mine too. Although, if the last few days are anything to go by, it seems in pretty short to supply at the moment. Take some of mine too. You guys, oh my, he's so sweet. <laughs> oh, thanks. With a little luck from everyone combined, we'll make it down this mountain for sure. Yeah, you bet. Let me flip a treasure border insignia to test it out. Alright, it's tails the opposite of what I guessed. So you can predict your fortune this way. But why are you so happy that you got it wrong? It has two sides, so there is a 50-50 chance of me getting it correct. Luck all comes down to probability too. So as long as I use up all the bad luck, everything else will go smoothly. Guessing wrong when I flip it. An insignia is one way to use up some of the bad luck. So the probability of having some good luck in the near future just got a little higher. Hey, he's making no sense at all. Why aren't you calling him out? Come on, he isn't you. <laughs> I'm actually polite to most people. <laughs> Guys, I guess wrong in my insignia flip, which means we should be able to make it back to the camp. I'm not sure that's how it works. Let me try. Is this way right? Wow, ouch, oh my butt. <laughs> what is this shard of ice doing here? 
truly miraculous. This is a miracle of misfortune. I don't usually believe in luck, but Bennett makes the best case for it I've ever seen. Amber, if you are ever required to partner with Bennett in your future work and you encounter anything like this again, do not take any rash action. Wait for me and I will come to support you. <gasps> yes, of course. Everyone must be exhausted. Now that you mention it, I do feel a little tired. Trekking in the mountains has a way of wearing you out. Since everyone is tired, why not take a rest in my camp? Bam and so sleepy. A nice bowl of hot soup and a good sleep. Would you be welcome right now? Here we are. Make yourselves comfortable. What is happening? <laughs> oh, I forgot. I don't have that many chairs. Please wait a moment. What's he doing? Painting. He's... He's painting a chair. What? Wait, alchemy can turn paintings into objects? How is this possible? My paintings are like blueprints. Alchemy simply enables me to omit the manufacturing part of the process. It's an elementary level technique. With enough research and experimentation, this same technique can even be used to create living beings. Whoa! Well, since you can magically produce chairs, can I have one with a backrest? I'll have a stool. No problem. How many of you want backrests? Me. Me, me. I'll also take one with a backrest, if you please. Can Paimon have a chair that comes with a juicer? A whole chair is way too big for you, surely. Still a bit squeezing on the stool with you. <laughs> In a moment, I'll better quickly create five chairs for everyone to use. Cool. We have chairs now. <laughs> this is so comfortable. Makes me want to stay the night here. You are very welcome to stay overnight if you wish. There is still some time before dinner. Get some rest, everyone. I'll tend the stove. Hey now, we can't be letting you do all the work. I can help. Please put me to work. So, are they going to spend the night on the chairs <laughs> without beds or something? This is strange. So, now we have um, everyone to talk to, maybe, and then we should wait until night time the next day. I wonder if there is anything I can do to help out. So... We need to ask him all these questions or just leave him be <laughs> about what happened today. Oh, sorry for dragging you guys into another situation. I didn't used to know any of these nights very well, but after spending some time with them on this trip, it's really opened my eyes to my own shortcoming. They're also talented and kind. I have a lot to learn from them. Oh, yeah, you gotta tell me something how you managed to make friends with so many dumb people. <laughs> About the regime, oh, you mean Gerald? I heard that you all developed a whole train program for him. He might be new, but I bet he'll improve pretty quickly with a mentor like that. Okay, so this is, this is 
Pace yourself. Dinner could be a while. I still have a few things to prepare. When will dinner be? About the paint, about dragon's spine, how you're holding up. Okay. It's almost ready now. Traveler, please light the campfire and gather everyone for dinner. Light the bonfire. I made a few dishes based on, on some popular Mondstadt recipes. This is no good hunter, but, uh, but there should be enough to go around. Please help yourselves. Whoa, smells great. Don't mind if I do. Wait, don't steal all the fried vegetables. Leave some for me. Hey. Everyone enjoy dinner around. Albedo, you are the modest. These dishes are as good as anything you'd find in a top restaurant. Are all alchemists so good at cooking? You may be onto something there. Right? Paimon thinks so too. It's his lab manner that gives it away. The kind of guy who holds a potion bottle as steady as a rock. Who's gonna be slapdash with his salt and pepper? Actually, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Albedo smiling, so cute. I'm so sleepy after all that food. Bennett is sleeping. Did Bennett fall asleep sitting up? He must be totally wiped out. The way he's sleeping is so alert. I'm impressed. Bennett is sleeping. He seems to be in a deep sleep. Bamon wonders if he sleeps do uh, sleep dogs. Uh, no, Dad. No apples for me. I want sticky honey roast and fisherman's toast. <laughs> sticky honey roast. That's your favorite, isn't it, Amber? <laughs> sure is. Give me a sticky honey roast from Good Hunter any day. I used to take you a lot to Good Hunter a lot back when we first met. Before long, Sarah would start cooking our usual orders as soon as she saw us coming. She said we ordered the same things so often that it was practically muscle memory, but by that point, <laughs> She also said that if everyone in Mondstadt ordered like we do, her job would be so much easier. All she'd have to do is to memorize everyone's favorites. favorites. Uh -uh. Always eating together. Oh, that's nice that you two are so close. Lovely Dream and Paimon always eat together too. It's a sure sign of true friendship. Two people simply sharing a meal says nothing either way about the relationship between them. Either way. Either way. That depends if it's a one-off meal or a regular occurrence. He's not wrong. Uh -huh. Paimon just noticed something. Whenever Yuola doesn't want to admit to something, she raises her chin or puts her hands on her hips. Ah, uh, you've all picked up on that. Didn't know you lost tells were so easy to spot. We are done here, yes. I am free to go, am I not? Please excuse me, I have a frozen lake I need to be at. You're going for a nice bath at this time of the night. Wait up, don't go 
without me. I thought he wanted to get some sleep, so maybe you should stay here and rest. No, I can't come with you. It's late and it's dark, and you're not good with directions like I am. Come on, let's go together. <laughs> this is strange. Amber was so tired, but now she's going with Yula. They are pretty good friends, right? A nice bath. Ooh, rather than rather them than Paimon. <laughs> so much roast me. <laughs> Oh, hey, Dad. I'm doing all right. I'm the leader of my own adventure, Dina. Whoa, Bennett really is a sleep talker. <laughs> okay, looks like we got some downtime now. Already do. Time to paint. Prepare to be amazed. Time for me to show what I can do. How you decided what to paint. <laughs> like, you need, like you even need to ask. It's obviously coming going to be Paimon. Okay, Paimon it is. Sure, but we should move elsewhere. We're likely to disturb Bennett's sleep if we stay here, so let's go outside. Okie dokie. Alright, grab your easel, paper, brushes and paints. Don't leave anything behind. Okay, so... sleeping soundly with his eyes tightly shut. Confidence is a good thing. Those to warm. It is endowed too well to flaunt in. To flaunt it. I'm looking forward to the finished piece. Oh my, his language is so difficult. Those to warm. It is endowed to do to well to flaunt it. Those to warm. It is endowed to well to flaunt it. I don't know all these words. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Traveler, have you previously received any education in the fine arts? Very, very little. No, but our art comes from the heart, so... What? You pour your heart on that page and this is what comes out. <laughs> I just wanted to convey how special you are. Special? <laughs> you seriously think special is supposed to look this ugly? <laughs> Paimon's not convinced, but Paimon is struggling to come up with a comeback. Fascinating. Paimon, if this is not to your liking, I can make a few am amendments. Traveler, do you think? Please and thank you. I'll be doing some improvements to the artwork. Alright then. Paimon, is this better? Oh my, it is much better. Much better, guys. Very beautiful. It's, it's a total ground up overall. That's what it is. It is so pretty. Is that really what Paimon looks like? Adding a flourish to the finished piece is an essential component of what makes art, art. This is not to say that you differ from the painting on a fundamental level, rather that the real you and the you in the painting present, present two different styles of beauty. You remain the core reference point for the painting. So, Paimon, you can put your misgivings aside and hang this painting wherever you like. Now I see the gap in our painting talents. <laughs> this was my trial by fire as an artist. Wow, thanks, Albedo. I'm merely added a floor here and there. You should be thanking the traveler. <laughs> It was um, so interesting how Hula saved Amber. <laughs> they fell down. They'll be okay though, right? 
I think they are both robust enough to survive the fall, but if the falling debris is knocked to them unconscious and they are lying there in the freezing cold, we have to get down there and rescue them immediately. Okay, let's move. Hang in there, guys. Wow, that was unexpected, really. Head beneath the cliff to look for your companions. Let's hurry up. They can be in danger. What's here?
Either path will work for us, the smaller trail is less worn and harder to see, but it's also shorter. Since everyone is weary, I suggest we take a shortcut. Follow me. Okay, so now I'm thinking that he's an imposter. imposter. Everyone follows Albedo onward. Bennett and Ember don't look well. Can we take a break? We can continue once their conditions have improved. Uh, now that you mention it. Uh, I... You hit your head earlier, didn't you? Oh, you, you noticed? <laughs> Are you sure it's worth holding everyone up over a little thing like this? No problem at all. Health and safety always come first. Take a break, both of you. Okay, sorry for this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> what, Albedo? This is not the real Albedo. Talk to everyone. So, let's talk to Ember first. Drinking some water can help with the dizziness. Oh, and uh, lying flat on your back helps too. Thank you, Bennett. Seems like you really know your stuff. <laughs> well, when life gives you lemons, Bennett, weren't you feeling dizzy too? Stop pushing yourself, both of you. Get some rest. We'll continue when you, you've gathered your energy. <laughs> Yola might come off as a little fro frosty, but she takes caring for her friends super seriously. More than anyone else I know. Every time I see that look on her face, I'm just like, uh, stop staring at me. <laughs> no, we need to talk to you, alright? Traveler, I know what that look means. What 
Brace yourself. This will be a challenge. Stay back. I'm going to cut the sweet down. Destroy the wildflower. Okay, fruits. <clears throat> this was unexpected. So, what should we do? Okay. Pick up the wildflower. What? Oh, here's the wildflower. Okay. We need to heal a little bit. Okay, so this is a great fight, in my opinion. A new boss, the Fell Flower. Very interesting. But it is interesting that it wasn't, it was unexpected. Very unexpected, in my opinion. Uh, and very loud, so I think. Yes. <laughs> 
species a mutated wobber flower, an extremely rare kind. But can wobber flowers turn into humans? Not typically, but conditions on dragon's spine are far from typical. Perhaps the dragon's blood seeped into the land, then was passed to the monsters via the ley lines, accelerating their rate of mutation. How could that happen? This mountain is home to the remains of Turin, the venomous dragon. If there is anywhere in the world one might expect life to do unfathomable things, it would most likely be here. Turin was an artificially created life form. Its existence is nothing short of a miracle and a proof of countless possibilities. In other words, this mountain we stand on is a cradle of life's profoundest mysteries, a vast and terrifying god but of possibilities. The avalanche, it must have been the work of this imposter. I think so too. Agreed. All the other troubles you faced on the way down could also have been its handiwork. My guess is that it was targeting everyone that I have uh, had contact with. And did this warper flower steal your alchemy notes too? Right, I forgot all about that. It's not inconceivable. But what was its purpose? Was it just trying to get rid of us? I have a preliminary hypothesis, hypothesis on this. Warper flowers are masters of mimicry, and those we encounter in the wild often appear in the vicinity of the plants they impersonate. In other words, the warper flower likely has an instinct to replicate and replace as a plant, it will disguise itself as another plant and infiltrate the group hiding among them for cover. The plant being imitated has no way to detect or fight back against this behavior, but when it disguises itself as a human, it wanted to replace you and infiltrate our group. Yes, maybe it created the avalanche to get rid of us. I predicted this eventually, so I availed myself of the avalanche to hide and lure it out. It was watching us the whole time, and when it saw that I had disappeared, its instinct was to take my place. At that point, its disguise was completely, and its next move was to hunt its prey. Yes, that's exactly how upper flowers operate. So when it approached and attacked a jewel, what was that? A trial run? Perhaps. Or maybe it enjoyed posing as a human and wanted to experience what it felt like to be a human. We're fortunate to have discovered it in time. I think the traveler was the first person other than Albedo to notice something was wrong. Eula, you were very perceptive too. Traveler, how could you tell the real me and my imposter apart? I want to know too. I had no idea the other car was an imposter. They looked exactly the same to me. The imposter didn't have a star-shaped mark on its neck. I see. It goes to show how difficult it is to impersonate a human. This mutant whopper flower tried its best to replicate the original, original exactly, but still managed to miss some details. Oh really, I didn't notice that he has a star in his neck. This is because he is not a real human, right? Unbelievable to think that Dragon's Spine creates such terrifying possibilities. A whopper flower. It adds up, but a piece of this puzzle is still missing. Was this the same one we met on the way? On the day we were chasing the thief? It didn't feel quite the same. Could the Whopper Flower's mutation be unstable? Anyway, at least we won in the end. It looks like my method did work after all. I used up all the bad luck, and the good luck finally came through. About that, if you are referring to having fallen down the mountain and avoided injury, well, that's because I was secretly protecting you. Huh? Oh, well, that still counts as a good luck for me. <laughs> yes, that's not an unreasonable, unre unreasonable way of looking at it. Okay, we've been delaying long enough. Time to move on. Yeah, let's go. Thank you.
I don't know what I'd do without you guys. If not for you, I'd probably still be locked up in that cage. I really want to talk. Uh, I really want to thank you all properly, but I can't think how at the moment. Uh, you must be pretty used to, to being on the receiving end of people's kindness by now, though, surely. You probably need it often enough, given your um, situation. <laughs> Sure, plenty of people have shown me kindness before, but that doesn't mean I will ever take it for granted. No matter how many times people help me out in life, I will never forget any of them. Well, instead of repaying those who helped you, perhaps you could help others yourself. Everyone meets others in, uh, in need from time to time by choosing to be there for them. You are passing the kindness you received on to others. Yep, you're right. That's what I've always tried to do, and will always continue to do. <laughs> right, and when Cyrus gets back, I will find some way to help him out, too. Phew, this has been quite an event eventful day. Yeah, it has. It's really hit me how tired I am now that I've started to relax. I need to rest. Everyone, please excuse me for a while. Yeah, I need to get some water and maybe a piece of fruit. Once I'm rested up, I need to get back to being an instructor again. Phew. Well, it looks like the curse of the mountaineers who couldn't get off the mountain is finally broken. Feels like an action. Back to chap chapter has come to a close. Shall I find somewhere to rest and chat to? Why not? Then please come with me. Something to say to me. You sensed something too, didn't you? Then let's go. Huh? Are you going back to your camp again? Paimon thought maybe we could talk here. Come on, Paimon. Oh, okay. Might as well come with you. Good. Shall we set off right away? Sure. You follow up Albedo to a campsite in the mountains. To the dragon's point again. Why not? Sorry for bringing you back here once again. Some topics are best discussed in private. Is this about the imposter? That's right. I have to say, traveler, I'm very surprised you noticed the difference between me and the imposter. Do you mean the mark on your neck? Yes, this mark. Perhaps it's where it all began. Oh, sounds like the beginning of a b big story. Keep going. Well, I can't deny that. What I'm about to say does sound like something from a children's storybook. So, what do you think this diamond-shaped mark means? Um, a tattoo, a crest, something else, a scar? No, consider it a birthmark. Have you ever seen an intricate glass ornament and wondered how it was made? Well, one method for crafting with glass is a technique known as glass blowing. Glass blowing is not a widely known art in Teyvat. For this reason, glassware made in this way is usually very expensive. As, as the name implies, glass blowing in involves blowing air into a hole, much like blowing up a balloon. This type of glassware is known for having a bone deal mark at the point where the blowpipe was inserted, where the hole was sealed at the very end. This mark is a sign that the item was crafted by a human hand. Sounds 
kind of amazing. It is wondrous and beautiful art form. Alice says that these marks are seen as proof of the maker's fine handiwork. The only flow in an otherwise perfect work of art. My mark is something similar to this. The difference between synthetic and natural life lies in directional flow of the life force. The energy of a natural life form blows out from within. That's why flower buds bloom and girl leaves unfold. It is the very reason we watch in wonder at blossoming flowers. Creating life artificially, on the other hand, involves, to a certain extent, the introduction of an external source of energy into the embryonic life form, when the hole where the life force was infused is sealed at the end. It leaves a mark not dissimilar to the bone deal mark and Glasswares. The alchemical substance drips and spreads out in all directions, resulting in this rather ingenious diamond shape. Whoa, so that's where it came from. This mark is a sign of my artificial origins and proof of my imperfection as a human. I presume that the imposter intentionally avoided replicating this mark so as not to become less than perfect himself. Should he be telling me all this? You are fundamentally different from other people. I have few qualms about sharing my secrets with you. Just as Paimon said, it all sounds like a story. Even if you were to tell anyone else, they would regard it as nothing more than a tall tale. The dress and then and miraculous are not the only things to which human beings aspire. They pursue the everyday, the or ordinary, to a far greater extent than I would have ever imagined. Hence the, no hence the notion of otherness. People like to believe that those who are thoroughly different from themselves could only ever exist in stories. It makes things much easier. Or in other words, all the unfathomable things we have seen recently would make good material for a novel. I have friends who write novels. If they wrote this story, it would probably be even more complex. Making up stories is easy. Even Byman can do that. Oh, I didn't know you had that kind of talent. <laughs> Byman's the best guide in Devat. Making up stories is a piece of cake. In that case, how about we have a storytelling contest? We can base our stories on the events of the last few days. It sounds great, but we still have to help out the adventurous guild. I understand. Creativity is something that cannot be rushed. Take your time and come back when you have found some inspiration. We'll see whose story is more compelling. Deal. Okay, we'll regroup with the adventurous guild for now. Sure. Monogatari. Tashkani. Jizen ni omoi tsuku beki datta. Ryu no hara ni wa shishou ga tsukutta shippai saku ga atta. Sore ga monogatari no kenten. もし僕たちの立場が逆転し、当時生き残ったのが君だったら、僕は放棄された実験品として、現象の人間計画の失敗者として、君にとって変わろうとするだろう。自らの姿を君に変え、君の錬金術を学び、奇跡の生物を創造
this video and thank you for being here with me <laughs>